Right. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, um, wherever you are. Here's another question. Um, and this one is on, um, well, it's dynamics, really. Um, well, let's call it vectors, because it's vectors. You might have heard of that word, vectors, forces. Right. So, forces. We've got vectors, we've got forces, and we're going to do a bit of moments as well. So it looks like it's a bit of a pain, but take a step by step is quite logical. So what we've got, we've got this um, L bracket. It's called an L bracket because it looks like an L. Um, and it's fixed at that pivot point there. See that this pivot point here, this red dot here. So it can rotate about that. Um, it's 600 mil high look. 600 mil, it's 700 mil that way, it's 200 mil in there, it's 300 there, 400 there, and that gap would also be 400 in there, wouldn't it? That would be 400. It's got a force on it, 20 newtons coming down that way, 15 newtons coming that way, 21 coming this way, and 30 at an angle. Okay, so this thing is going to move, it's going to spin. All of these forces are going to make this thing going to have a resultant force in a certain direction and it's going to spin. We've got to work out that force and which way it's going to spin. Okay? So the posh way of saying it is this. So we've got to work out first the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. All that means is, is the size and which way it's going. Because all these forces will add up to a resultant force. So we've got to find that first. Then we're going to find the turning moment because all of these forces are going to make this thing turn about that pivot point. So we've got to work that out. Is it going to be spinning clockwise or anti-clockwise? So that's that one. And then this one is just show the line of action of the resultant. All it is, that's just the line. We're going to draw a line representing the force representing the resultant force which is the result of these four and the equilibrium is just a posh word for the equal force equal and opposite force so we're going to draw a line and then the perp perpendicular distance all that means is, is how far that line is away from that pivot point okay so you might see it worded like that in an assignment or in a book or something right but it just means the size and direction and which way this thing is spinning okay so the first one we're going to do let me rub some of this up the first one we're going to do is number one i want to look magnitude and direction of the resultant force that just means how big is the force and which way is it going is it going up and left down and right okay. so number one Number one is we're going to be finding finding the resultant force. Resultant force. The result of them four forces. We've got one force, two force, three force. One, two, three, four forces. So combined, what's the resultant force and direction? Which way is it going? That's really what we're doing. Okay. That's going to be part one. So, part one, find the resultant force and direction of these four forces, right? So, all we've got to do is this. We're going to add up the forces. Add up all forces. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Add them all up. Sum of, that means sum of, look, sum of the forces. Gonna add them up. Okay. Now, if you notice, we've got some. Right. Some going like this. Twenty here. Look. That's going vertical. Right. It's also going down. Uh, that twenty-one is going horizontal. And it's going left, isn't it? Okay. So we've got to define these now. 
So this is what I'm going to take because I can't, it's my video. Okay. So anything going that way, I'm going to call plus. Anything going up, I'm going to call plus. Okay. Anything coming down, I'm going to call minus. And anything coming across, I'm going to call minus. Okay, because we've got to give these forces directions. So all we're going to do is add them up. Okay, I'm just going to add them up. We're going to add horizontal. Okay, and then we're also going to add vertical. Because we can't add them together because one's going horizontal and one's going vertical. So we're going to be doing adding the horizontals together and adding the verticals together. And then we'll use a bit of Pythagoras to find the resultant. Okay, so 20. Okay, that one's easy because we can add it. It's going down and it's vertical. Okay, 15, that's going to the left and it's horizontal. 21 is going left and horizontal. Easy peasy. This one here, the 30 Newton one, is not going horizontal or vertical. It's at an angle of 27 degrees. So before we can add that to the other ones, we've got to do a bit of maths. Okay. So we need to break this one down. Okay. So I'll just draw it on here so we know what it is. We've got a 30 Newton force like that, look. And the angle in here was 27 degrees, I think. Let's go up. Yeah, 30 and 27. So I've just drawn that down there. Okay, now we can break this up into, so you might remember this. Let me get a pen. Come on, more. All right, we can break an angled force down into its horizontal and vertical components. I'll call that horizontal and I'll call this vertical. Okay. And then we've got this force like that. So every resultant force, every angled force has got a horizontal and vertical component. That's 30 newtons, 27 degrees. Okay. So if you remember, in class or some from another class or a book, we know it's a different colour. Um go blue. Horizontal to break this down into horizontal, we've got to do F cos theta. F is just this. That's the force. F is the force. And theta is just the angle. So if I want to find the horizontal component of that force, all I've got to do is this, 30 cos, right, get your calculator out, 27. That'll give you the horizontal part of that force. If you put that in your calculator, you'll get a number. It'll be something like this, 26.73 newtons. 30 cos 27. Make sure your calculator is not in radians. Okay? So that's my horizontal force. Okay? And then my vertical one, it's going to be F sine theta. We're using this 27 from the horizontal, right? So F sine theta, using that angle and that force. So, different color pen. Let's put a different color over here. Ooh, this. And green. Let's go green. So F sine. So F is just 30. Sine 27. That's what I'm doing. Whack that in the calculator and you will get 13.62. That just means that's the vertical component. So what I've done now is... I've broken this force down here, look, 
So now I've replaced that 30 newtons with a fourth going that way, okay, of 26.73. And I replaced it with a fourth going up of 13.62. Okay. All that means is if you were pulled that way at 26.73 newton and you were pulled up 13.62 newtons, the resultant force would be 30 newtons that way at 27 degrees. Okay, so now I've split that angled force into horizontal and vertical, which now means I can add it to the other one. Okay, I can add it to the other one. So to make it easier, I'm just going to bring another diagram in right there. So as if by magic, okay, there's another diagram. And all I've done in this diagram is the same as this one at the top, look. But all I've done is I've just put in them two forces that we worked out just now. Okay, so I've replaced that 30. Okay, let me just give a bit of a clean up here. Okay, so all I've done it's the same thing. But all I've done is I've put that 13.62 and that 26.73 in there. Look, I'm sure you can see it. Stop the shot to the back. That one there, look, and that one there. That's where the 30 was. The 30 was there, look. The 30 was there, just to make sure. There was the 30. I've split it up into horizontal and vertical, 13.62 and 26.73. And there it is. All right. I would do the same thing if you're doing your problem, right? So now I've got horizontal and vertical forces. So I can now find the resultant. Okay. Find resultant. Resultant. Okay. I'm going to add up. Add one. Add horizontal up. Right. And then I'm going to add vertical up. Vertical. Okay, some are going vertical, some are going horizontal. I've got no angles left, which is good. Now, like I said before, um, everything going up and to the right, I'm going to call plus. Anything coming down and to the left, I'm going to call minus. Direction. Right, it's not a negative force, we're not floating, it's just it's going a different way. So horizontal. All right, let me get another colour. Okay. So this little symbol means sum of. That means sum of add up all the forces, F stands for forces, in the horizontal direction. All I'm doing is adding up the forces in the horizontal direction. Okay, so my first force in horizontal is 21. Don't forget this now. That's plus, that's plus, that's minus, that's minus. Okay, and then add them all up. All right, I'm making sure that I put minus or plus, depending which way they go. 21, which way is 21 going? Correct, good, correct answer. It's going to the left. I'm going to put minus 21 because it's going. To the left, right? What's, what else have I got? I'm going to add them all up. I'm going to go plus now. What else have I got? I got uh, 15. 15 is horizontal. It's also going left. So I'm going to put minus 15 by there. Okay. You haven't got to put the plus there. You can just do minus 21, minus 15. But we're adding things up. So just to make it a bit clearer, perhaps. Um, so we've done. 21, we've done 15. Any of the horizontal forces? Yes. 26.73 is horizontal. It's going to the right. I'm going to go plus 26.73. So we're adding up all the horizontal forces, making sure we put a minus if it's going, <coughs> going to the left. If you add all that up, you should get minus 9.27 newtons. That just means the resultant horizontal is 9.27. Because it's minus, it means it's going that way. 
If you think about it, you've got 15 and 21 going that way, and you've got 26 going that way. That take away all of them will give you 9.27. The minus just means it's going left. It's not a negative force, okay? So that's the horizontal one done. Get rid of the rest of this stuff here. So now I'm going to add up now the vertical ones. Let's see if I can do it down here. Um, in a pen. So sum of, that just means sum of the forces vertical. Up and down ones. If it's going up, it's going to be positive. If it's coming down, it's going to be minus. So I've got, what have I got? I've got 20. It's going down, so I'm going to put minus. 20. We're adding things up, so I'm going to put plus. What else have I got? Well, I've only got one more, and it's 13.62. That's going up. Okay, so I'm going to put plus. 13.62. That's all I've got. I've only got two forces going up and down. Was handy. Um, and you should get minus six point three eight newtons. Minus means it's coming down. Okay. So we've got the resultant vertical now is minus six point three eight, and all that means is it's coming down. Okay. So now we know that all them forces add up to this. Okay, we've got 9.27 going that way. I know it's going that way because the math tells me minus 9.27 means it's going to the left. And then I've also got coming down, what have I got coming down? Got 6.38 coming down. I know it's coming down because the maths told me it's coming down. Okay. So that's my forces added up. So this thing is being pulled that way 9.27 and down 6.38. So the resultant force is what we're trying to find is this. Resultant RF. Resultant force, which we've got to find, okay, and we also need to find the angle in there. So I need to find the resultant, resultant, and I need to find reason. No, it's wrong. There's an S there. Resultant. Let's mix that up. Anyway, you know what I mean. Resultant, okay, and then the direction which is it going 35 degrees down, 10 degrees down? Okay, we're gonna be using Pythagoras. Yeah, get in Pythagoras. Don't be scared, you've done it before. Okay, on your triangle. So here's what we're after. So we've got 9.27 there, which we know. And down here we've got 6.38. And we've got to find this force in there. Okay. So I'm going to draw another little triangle now, because it always triangles. I'm going to draw a line this way. I'm going to label that 9.27. I'm going to draw a line down here. I'm going to label it 6.38. Because that is 6.38, and that's going to be 9.27. And all then I've got to find is that line there. Okay, that's the resultant force there. Look, uh, resultant. Just a triangle. That's all it is, just a triangle. Now, Pythagoras, you might know as of a uh, different color. Let's get different color. No, let's, let's get different colors. Go this one here. So, uh, Pythagoras, you might know as c squared equals a squared plus 
p squared. Okay. Um, I'm going to label that c. I'm going to label that side a. And I'm going to label that side b. Because I can in my video. So if I know a and I know if I know a and I know b, can't get the words out. If I know a and I know b, I can find c. And c is the resultant force. Okay, the hypotenuse. Okay, so the the that la this line here is the resultant. So c squared equals a squared. I know what a is. It's six point three eight. Six point three eight squared. Plus uh, b squared. B is nine point two seven. Nine point two seven squared. Okay. So I can say this. So I know that a square root is opposite to a square. So on your calculator, do this now. So to get rid of the square root the square over here, I'm going to do this. Do all in one go. Square root six point three eight two plus nine point two seven. Don't forget the squares, and that will give you the length of the resultant force. Okay, so all I'm doing really is that 9.27 and that 6.38, just square them and then square root the answer. So the answer is 11.25 newtons. And all that means is, is that, um, let's go up here, this here is 11.25. Newtons. Okay, so this thing has been pulled 9.27 that way left and 6.38 down, and the resultant is 11.25 newtons. So the resultant force after all of that, resultant force is 11.25 newtons. Okay, so all of that we've done um, this here, look. The magnitude of the resultant force, okay, which is 11.25. Now we've got to do the direction, because we know that this resultant force is coming down like that. Right, eleven point two five. We also know we've got a force coming there and a force coming there. Okay, and that's equal to uh, nine point two seven six point three eight. Nine point two seven six point three eight. So this part is trying to go down like that. Now we've got to find this angle in here. Okay. I'll draw my little triangle again. This is all this is triangle. Okay. I've got 9.27 there. Down here I've got 6.38. And this line here is 11.25. Okay. 11.25 is the resultant force. We've got to find the angle in there. So now we're going to use Sokotoa. Sokotoa. You can hear the groans behind the screen. So I'll use sine. I like sine. Right? So there's my angle. Okay, so I'm going to label. So that's my angle. This 6.38 is opposite. It's the opposite side to the angle. Uh, this long side here, this 11.25 is my hypotenuse. Okay, I'm gonna use sine. Okay, and this this 9.27 is adjacent. Because we know all, we know them all, we know them. If you're struggling, just draw a triangle. If you drew 9.27 centimeters that way and 6.38 down, 
that line will be 11.25 and you can measure the angle. So I'm going to use sine. So sine of the angle is opposite over by hypotenuse. Okay, we know the opposite. The opposite is 6.38. And the hypotenuse is 11.25. Okay, now from your maths, you should know that we've got an inverse sine because we're trying to find the angle. So you want to do sine minus one. Okay, and then you want to do 6.38 divided by 11.25. So on your calculator, you should see that above the sign. So on your calculator, you will see sign, and then in a different color above it, you might see sign minus 1. Okay, make sure you're not in radians. So if you do that in your calculator, you'll get an answer of 34.55 degrees. That's the direction. So after all of that, right, we know that this force is coming down at 34.5 degrees and it's coming down 11.25 newtons. So all of that's quite long, but just go through it steadily. So what we've done, we found the resultant force and the direction. Okay, that's what we've done for that one. Okay, so we found now that the resultant force of this thing, right, is coming down like that. Okay, at 11.25 newtons because the math tells us so that's like a song and the angle in there because we've just worked it out is uh, 34 and a half 34.55 degrees so that is the size and direction of the resultant force direction so it's coming down, you know, that way, south, north, south, east, west, southwest, 34 and a half degrees, 11.25 newtons. Okay, so that is, after all of that, that's uh, part one done, okay? Okay, so I'm going to have a cup of tea, we'll come back and we'll do part two, over and out. Okay, so... We found the resultant force and direction. It's going down 34.5 degrees at 11.25. So we've done that. So we've done number one. So we know that it's trying to go down like that. Okay. But it can't because that this pivot point stopping it. So now we've got to work out the turning moment, number two. All that means is, is it going to be turning clockwise? Right. Is it going to be going that way? Clockwise? Or is it going to be going anti-clockwise? Because that force, that 11.25 force, is going to make this thing spin, perhaps. Because it's fixed there at that pivot point. So is it going to go clockwise or anti-clockwise? So we need to find that. Now, I'm going to call clockwise plus. If it's spinning clockwise, I'm going to call it plus. If it's going anti-clockwise, minus, okay? Because now we need to find the moment due to each force. So we're doing number two now, right? So number two, scroll down, look. So number two. So here's my forces again. Look, I've got all these forces on here. Look, and these forces now individually are going to make this thing spin. Okay? Clockwise or anti-clockwise. So we've got to find out. So we know that a moment is force times distance. Okay? To open a door, you've got to create a moment. Your hand pulls on the handle and 
spins about the pivot point, which is a hinge on a door. So we've got to now add up all the moments. So we're going to add up all the moments. That, that little symbol there means add up. We're going to be doing force times distance to the pivot point. We'll start off with number 20. Okay, so it's force times distance. So just write down 20 is the force times by how far is this 20 here? Look, and don't forget a moment is like that. It's force coming down like that and then 90 degrees to the distance. Okay, so here's my 20. There's my 20 coming down like that. Look, and here is my distance look. So that's my force coming down. And this length of this line here, this green line there, is going to be uh, 400 plus 300, which is 700 in my book, which is 0 0.7. Because it's 700 millimeters, which is 0 0.7 of a meter. Okay. So there's my 20 coming down like that. And then 90 degrees to there, look, that length there is 700, which is 0 0.7 of a meter. That'll give you 14 Newton meters. Okay. And if you think about it, that force would spin this thing clockwise. So I'm going to put CW there. So it's a plus. So that was that one. Okay. I'll rub that out, get a different color view. So the next one I'm going to do is the uh, 26.63. So my force is 26.73 times by, so here's my force look, so just draw like that's my force going that way. 26.73 like that. And my distance is this. That's my D by there, and that's my F. My F is 26.73. This distance here has got to be 600, take away 200, 400, which is 0.4 meter. It's 400 millimeters, which is 0.4. So force times distance gives me that. There's my force, 26.73, 90 degrees to it. That distance there was 400 millimeters, which is 0.4 of a meter. So in your calculator, that'll give you 10.7 Newton meters. Okay. Which way is it going to spin? Well, I reckon this is going to go that way, isn't it? So it's clockwise. Don't forget clockwise plus. So these are all going to be plus when we add them up. Um, next one, we'll do 13.62. Uh, Get a different colour. 13.62. So that's my force. Write it down. 13.62. Okay. Um, there's my force. There, look. 13.62 coming like that. And then the distance is to there. That distance there, look. So 13.62 coming up. This distance here, which is, I reckon, 700. 700, which is 0 0.7. So there's my force, 13.62 coming up. 90 degrees to it is the pivot point. That length is 700. Put that in your calculator and you get 9.5. Three, four Newton meters. Okay, now is it a plus or a minus? I don't know because is it going clockwise or anti clockwise? This is on the go slow. Um, this force here, I reckon, is going to make this thing go that way. I reckon, about that point. So it's anti clockwise. So when we add them up in a bit, I'm going to put a minus by there. Just going the other way. Okay, anti-clockwise. 
Um, what else we got here? Different color. Come on. Different color. Let's go for what about yellow. Obviously, can't see yellow. Let's go for red. The next one we've got is the 21. 21. So 21 is the force times by the distance. Well, there's my force going that way. And then really, it's this distance here, look. So it works. The moment is going that way. Distance that way. Oh, coming down, which is going to be 400 again, isn't it? Yes. 200, 600, 400. 400 millimeters, 0.4 of a meter. So 21 going that way, 400 coming down. That's 0 0.4 then, because that's 200 and that's 600. 600 take away 200 is 400. 400 millimeters is 0 0.4 of a meter. So 21 times by 0 0.4 gives you 8.4 uh, unit. Okay. Is it going clockwise or anti-clockwise? Let me think. Well, that's going to make this thing spin that way, isn't it? About that point there. Which is anti-clockwise. Minus. Okay. Last one. All right. Is this one here? 15. Now, 15 is not making this thing spin. Because it's pulling on the pivot point. It's like you trying to open a door on the hinge. It's not going to move. It might pull it off the hinges, but it's not going to make the door turn. Okay, because you've got this, you've got force, which is 15 times by, uh, that's the force, but there's no distance to the pivot point. It's exactly on the pivot point. So the distance to the pivot point is zero. 15 times by zero in my book is zero. Okay, so if it's on the pivot point like that, you, you can ignore it. If it was a millimeter up or a millimeter down, then it'll have a, it would have one, a very small one. Okay, but we haven't got to bother with it. It's on the pivot point. Nice and easy. We haven't got to bother with it. So we've only got one, two, three, four forces. And all we've got to do now is is add. So, so 14 plus 10.7 plus minus 9.53 plus minus 8.4. Add them all up. Don't forget these two minuses because they're anti-clockwise. Eh? So if you add them all up, you will get 6.7 Newton meters. Right. It's positive, which means it's going, correct, clockwise. So we know that this thing now is spinning 6.7 Newton meters clockwise. So it's trying to spin like that. So that force we worked out earlier on, that 11.25 at 34 degrees, is making this thing spin clockwise at 6.7 Newton meters. Okay, so that one is find the moment about the pivot point. So that 6.7 is the answer to number two. 6.7, number two. Thank you very much. The turning moment is 6.7 Newton meters clockwise. Okay, that's number two done. That's the hard work done, really. So number three now is the line of action. That's coming next to the line of action. Here it comes. Right, so number three. We're on the downward slope now. The hard work's done. Number three is show the line of action. That's the line for the resultant force, which we've done. The equilibrium is just a posh word for equal and opposite. So the equilibrium is the equal and opposite to the resultant. Okay, so all I'm going to do is draw a line. Okay, now we know the resultant force is coming down like that because we've worked it out. 
okay? It's coming down like that, look, 11.2. So this is my line of action. This red line here is my line of action. It's 11.25 at 34 degrees. That's where it's going to go. Now, we also know that it's spinning clockwise. Okay, so here's my diagram without all the dimensions on it. So we know that this force is trying to come down like that. What did we say? 11.25, uh, wasn't it? 11.25, and the angle in here, ding, 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 was 34.55. That's from part one, wasn't it? Yeah, like I say, isn't it? Yeah, 34 and a half, 11.25. So we know that's the way it's going to go. We also know it's spinning clockwise, which means it's trying to spin that way. Okay, that's clockwise, isn't it? About this point here, which means for this thing to spin clockwise, this line has got to be something like that, hasn't it? Maybe an hour by then. Because that force now would make this thing spin clockwise because we know we're going nine no six point seven. Okay, so it's six point seven uh newton meters clockwise. The clockwise is the important one. That's why my arrow is this side of the pivot point because that force would make this thing spin clockwise okay if 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 it came out anti-clockwise it would be over there wouldn't it because then it would make it spin about this point that way think about it okay but we're clockwise all right so we've got to be where we are and we know that it's 11.25 uh, newtons okay and the angle say just like that the angle in there is 34.55 okay that's my line of action that's it that's all it is line of action that's all it is so all you gotta do is draw it that's my line of action um this is the resultant force that's the resultant okay there so that's the line of action of the resultant force we've got to do the equilibrium which is the equal and opposite so all you do is this get a different color right and then same line look that's all it is because that force, that equal force, will balance it out. It'll stop it spinning. Things spin. Your gearbox in your car will spin. Something's got to stop it spinning. Otherwise, the entire thing would spin. Okay. So all you do then is that's your different line, different color, and this is the equilibrium. Equilibrium. Or the equal and opposite. It's equal and opposite. That's the same thing. That's the line of action of the equal and opposite. That's all it is. That's all you need to put. Resultant force down there, that's the line of action, and this is the equilibrium or the equal and opposite force. It's equal and opposite to that 11.25, which makes this thing not move. That's number three, that's all it is. Number three is just... Where's number three? There, look. Show the line of action of the resultant and equilibrium. That's all that is. There, look. Two different colors. 11.25, 34.55. Because we worked it out earlier on. There, look. And we know it's going 6.7 clockwise, which means it's got to be... It's got to be this side of the pivot point because it's going clockwise. Okay. That's the line of action number three done. We've got one more thing to do. Easy peasy. Here it comes. So the last part, two. 
All we've got to do now is find the perpendicular distance of the line of action of the resultant from the pivot point. All that means is, is how far is the line of action from the pivot point. That's what it means. It's the distance, number four. Okay. It sounds posh. It sounds a pain, but it's not. So, in normal words, it's this look. So, we've done moment. That's, remember that one, line of action. There's my line of action. 11.25, the green one was the equal and opposite, okay? What we're going to do now is, is find the distance to the pivot point, which is, uh, what color shall we use, Mr. Bond? Is this distance here, perpendicular distance, that distance there. Right? You can draw it if you want to on there. 90 degrees there, really. We haven't got to be that accurate. You know, it's not scale or anything, right? So that distance we need to find out. Yes, how do we do that, Moog? Well, here we go. We know from before that a moment is force times distance. Okay. Um, and that D is what we're trying to find. We're trying to find this D by there, look. Okay, now we know the moment because we've got it and we know the force. Okay, so... All I'm going to do is this moment divided by force will give me D. Just bring the F down. It's F times D in it. So opposite of times is divide. So I know that if I divide moment and force, I'll get my distance. Well, what's my moment? My moment is 6.7 and my force is 11.25. Okay, so all I'm going to do is this, 6.7, because that's my moment, divided by 11.25. Because I'm doing moment divided by force. My moment is 6.7, and my force is 11.25. That easy, no tricks. Uh, and the answer is uh, 0.59 meters, and that's my D. What that means is this. The distance in here is 0 0.59 meters, or 590 mil. So label like that, everyone's a winner. That's all it is. Part 4 done. Just divide moment and force. Obviously, you need to make sure that your moment and your forces are correct. Okay. That's part 4. Um, that's it. So that's the distance. So we know that all of these forces is going to make this thing, whatever this L bracket is doing, it's going to make it try and spin clockwise at 11.25, at 34 degrees from the horizontal there, look. It's 0.59 meters away from the pivot point. And the resultant force will make it spin unless we put this green equal and opposite force, which is called the equilibrium or equal and opposite force to stop it. All right. So that's it. Um, it's all right. Just go step by step and uh, take your time. Okay. Any problems? Let me know. Adios.